It has to be customized around the prospect of what they're looking to do, when they're looking to do it, why they're looking to do it. Until you know those things, you don't know how to follow up. You don't know what that next phone call needs to even be about, number one, or when it needs to happen. So going deeper on the conversations, business is as big as the number of relationships in your database that you're cultivating with that personal branding machine. So like for me, market share isn't how many listings you have or closings you have compared to the rest of the market or what that percentage is at the end of the year. Market share to me is how many property owners in, in the market, what percentage of property owners in the market know who I am and are, and I'm staying in touch with, right? And that love me. That's market share. You know, whoever has the largest percentage of property owners in the market who know who they are and is getting some kind of marketing material from them on a consistent basis, that's market share. I'll take the agent that sold 25 properties that has a bigger database and a, a larger desire to get out and make more friends in the market with property owners than the guy that sold 100 properties that doesn't stay in touch with anybody, right? Because I know the guy that, that's selling 25 properties in, in time, if he continues the momentum, will be selling 100 properties, 150 properties, 200 properties, right? So I quit paying attention to all that stuff a long time ago. It's like, it's like the articles that came out that said, there's more you know, agents than listings, right? How scary was that for a moment, you know, to hear that? You know, and but it, it's so obscured from the reality because what that article is illustrating is that window of moment in time that day. They're saying that there's more agents and listings today, but this was back when things were selling on average in one hour with 10 multiple offers. Right? So one day, let's call it. So there's more, so there's 1.5 million listings and there's 1.2 million agents in the country, okay? Well, that's just today. Tomorrow, there's a new 1.5 listings. The next day, there's a new 1.5, because all these listings are selling in a matter of minutes. There's a new 1.5 the next day, right? That was just that day. And that was just the listings that were on the market then. It's not like you have a different 1.2 million, million agents the next day. It's the same 1.2 million agents servicing these new 1.5 million dollar listing and 1.5 million listings the next day. You know, it's 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 really all perspective um, because I just like I say I quit looking at the I look at the yearly stuff, but I have a different perspective on the fact that this industry is like it's a. It's an abyss that shouldn't really be chopped into what the market looks like on a daily basis or yearly basis or what the mar market share of agents are this year or that year. It's interesting to see those numbers and yeah, you can, but if you understand the bigger picture of it, it's like when you create a relationship with the prospect, that relationship is worth 10 to 20 deals to you over the life of your career. Repeat business, referrals, and referrals over referrals. And if you take the referrals over referrals and the referrals and think about those being 10 to 20 deals to you over the life of your career, really every relationship is worth like 100 deals over the life of your career. Um, it's a huge snowball that starts to build when you really take care of people and it can really spider web into so many things. There's light at the end of the tunnel in terms of when you think about this, how we're out here prospecting and we don't like it and we don't want to call people even though it's the funnest thing on earth and it's the best opportunity. I mean, I don't want to go, you know, pour concrete tomorrow. I'd rather just make calls and see how people are doing. But for the people that are scared, right, and don't look at it from that perspective, what you got to realize is that this is fun, number one, but number two, there's light at the end of the tunnel where if you go hard on this and go all in for a good three to five years and build that database up to 5,000 people, you can literally live off that database and close 50 to 100 deals a year from that point on with no prospecting, just from the relationships that you built. Right? And so it's not like we're, you're prospecting for the rest of your life here. You know, we're doing this, we're putting the upfront work in to build the database up to the size that we need to, to cultivate the amount of closings we want to have every year. Once you build it up to that point, then you can quit prospecting. And listen, it, it's a totally different ball game when you're on that side of it, where people are reaching out to you that you build brand with and talk to. They're not interviewing three agents. They're calling one agent, you, and you're their guy and they're going to do whatever that you advise them to do. 
much easier business than first year agent. You know, every listing appointment, they're interviewing three agents. You miss some, you lose some. You know, there's a lot of hit or miss. There's a lot of grind and making calls and marketing and trying this and trying that. You know, you put all that together, you figure out what works really good for you. You eliminate everything else. You go all in on those activities and you have a three to five year plan to get to those, you know, five to 10,000 friends in the marketplace. So you can then turn that prospecting key off and then go do other things with your time in terms of spend more time with your family, go build other businesses, so on and so forth. I think a big mistake some of these coaches and brokers and trainers uh, make is that they put all these situations in a box and say, here's how you handle every situation. Right, and there's no way you can say, this is how you handle every situation. You should say this, and you should call back then, and you should do two text messages, a, a phone call, an email, and a, and a handwritten note. There's no way you should, sure, there's some like general things that you can do every time, but it comes down more to um, learning more about the prospect to see exactly what their situation is. It has to be customized around the prospect of what they're looking to do, when they're looking to do it, why they're looking to do it. Until you know those things, you don't know how to follow up. You don't know what that next phone call needs to even be about, number one, or when it needs to happen. So going deeper on the conversations, spending some time with people to see what it is exactly they're trying to accomplish, and then creating a game plan that includes follow up around their needs, you know, that's that's how you do it. But I mean, I would just have to hear more about whatever the situation is she's asking about to give a better specific answer. Percentage of people, regardless of your personality or regardless of your, you know, your strengths and weaknesses and what you're good at and not good at and what your hobbies are, there, there's a percentage of people, no matter what kind of person you are, very introverted, this or that, there's a percentage of people who will love you and want to do business with you, right? No matter what. And so they, it creates a situation where anybody can win in this business. Anybody can win. The problem is people just fail to search for the correct path. And then a lot of people just want it too quick. You know, they get in the business for 30 years and then quit after eight months. It's like, wait a minute, you just, you, you joined to do this for 30 years. And, you know, you actually were just getting to a point where you're learning, getting a good handle on a few things and you quit. You know, it shouldn't matter if it takes you two years to figure this thing out. You still got 28 years that you originally committed to go out there and crush it. You know, why do you have to do everything in a day? Like baby step your way into this thing. And you know, it's a long-term drawn out process. It's a, it's a, it's a really, you know, tough learning curve, you know, but once you get it, it's, it's amazing, right?